Okay, uh, this is going to be another Mr. Nobody video. I thought I'd take a look at systemic racism today. Um, as far as I can see, systemic racism is a system design issue called probability hacking or p-hacking. P-hacking is that the designers of systems get into each and every system they design. Every fund to fund I've ever monitored or a communication system I've ever designed, Central Park gets into that system somehow. If some kid from Idaho had made those systems, then potatoes would get in. But, but someone from New York did, so that's who's gonna get into the system. Today, our system designers are Mitch and Nancy, and you can see p-hacking in their Mitch and Nancy bank accounts. They are not accidentally publishing words to accidentally move our accidental stuff into their accidental Mitch and Nancy bank accounts at this rate. We can literally count the rate, see my other video. In 1787 America, our system designers were the founding fathers. And we're gonna count at the design session, which lasted nine years. Uh, in 1787 America, they dropped the constitution uh, in the first place, whatever state that was, to ratify first. And the nine years prior, they designed our systems. Well, let's look at what they wrote in the design session, which they wrote all the words down. One is not equal to three fifths. We have a problem right here. Uh, no system designer would design a system where any part of that system has it equal and also one equals three-fifths because one is not equal to three-fifths. So now we know that the Founding Fathers weren't doing this incidentally. The Founding Fathers were doing this intentionally. Intentional p-hacking is stealing. It's something that Mitch and Nancy are doing. Again, I keep trying to get someone to count and prove that mathematically, which you could do. And it's something the Founding Fathers did intentionally. Again, it's intentional. So... Let's look at the word all, and this will pretty much be our entire conversation about systemic racism. All men are created equal. Okay, that's not what the word all means. That's the problem with the people in the all group. They think the all group in mathematics would be a discrete object with an entity type, with a definition fairly close to male, landowning, non-landowning, over the majority age, and white. We're gonna include non-landowning in 1787 just for simplicity plus two subgroups, white women and white children. That is not what the word all means. That is describing all the people in that one group, which is what the word all means in America even today. Now let's look at this group. If you are in the all group in 1787 America or today, you are in luck. Every syllable of every sentence that describes each system we live under, its structure, its foundation, and how all the stuff moves was written exclusively by all male white members of the all group. And in those very words that we still live under today, the people in the all group, these people, and only those people, they took all the stuff under their feet, the, the males did, and they pointed all of it right at their group inside the all group, even to the exclusion of their own two subgroups who had no rights to the stuff. That's not what the word all means. Uh, in the very words we still live under, like I said, they took all the stuff under their feet and pointed it right at the all group. Now, had they left the other groups alone, they could make a case for incidental p-hacking, but they didn't leave the other groups alone. They had indigenous people here, people who were absconded here. They took the stuff under their feet, all of it, and they pointed all of that stuff also right at the all group, which is where it still resides today because that's where it's pointed at in the words in 1787 America, and we still live under those words. They took the stuff under their feet, and they also took the stuff around their feet, and they pointed all that at the all group. Then they took their feet, their children's feet, their loved one's feet, their dignity, their humanity, their homelands, and waters, and fish, and tastes, and sounds, and smells, colors, and flowers they'll never see again. They took all that. They took their labor. Their, their, they took their bodily integrity, what makes us safe. They, they took their knowledge. That's what makes us human and separates us from all the other beings in the universe. They took everything, their children, and they pointed it all right at the all group. And you'll notice those groups have nothing today still, and the all group has all the stuff in it. That's because that's where it's pointed, in the words. So if we could look at 2023 and find the all group today, well, we could see how much racial progress we've made. Well, that's not complicated. We have Black Lives Matter, and then the people vehemently opposed to that. They keep saying all lives matter. And to them, all in 2023 means male, landowning, non-landowning, over the majority age, and white with two subgroups, white women and white children, and a few tokens. Like, that's it. That's our racial progress right there. 
One, well, there you go, one busted pinky's worth. Now, I read somewhere once somebody wrote that as far as racism in America, it's as if it's been minus 50 degrees outside. And we gave somebody a hoodie and said, now we're even. We're not even. We've done nothing. We have this huge discrepancy. Comrade DeSantis and Trump and Cruz and Abbott and Jordan and half our loved ones are, are making laws and angry that there is no such thing as systemic racism. And they would live this way. Comrade DeSantis would not live this way if we were to even suggest that we rewrite the words of the Constitution with a much more varied group designing it and not all people of like this all group right here, male, land, owning white. If we were to have a more varied group, less farmers, some farmers, less farmers, mathematicians designing systems in charge with scientists, political scientists, linguists, we don't need any lawyers. And this much more varied group would write every syllable of every sentence that describes each system that, it, that Comrade DeSantis lives under and his pals, its structure, its foundation, and how all the stuff moves. And this very varied group of mathematicians and scientists should be all male black members of the Black Lives Matter movement. Comrade DeSantis, Trump, Cruz, Abbott, Jordan, and half your loved ones all of a sudden see systemic racism just fine. It was there the entire time. And look at how angry Comrade DeSantis is as he usurps the American right to life for the socialist right to let me be clear jobs and makes laws banning the idea that there's systemic racism. And he would live under such a constitution written by all male black members of any group. No, he wouldn't. This type of hypocrisy knows no political party. Nancy Pelosi believed the man. She doesn't care about that at all. And, and Comrade DeSantis would never live this way. Uh, hypocrisy is truly the lowest form of knowledge. Nature doesn't make a, me, a being with any less information than me. Nature doesn't make a being with any less morality than me. It is truly rock bottom. Congratulations, Nancy. Congratulations, Comrade DeSantis. You have reached the bottom of humanity. You have reached a state of me. This was meant to be we the people. Until we get these me the people peoples out of our apparatus, all we're gonna end up with is me the people, a singular system with freedom to religion, where you are free to practice only those religions, the Christians who cheated their way onto the bench, allow you to or force you to, where you have to live in a system where they're making laws that there's no systemic racism and black people are crazy for feeling oppressed. It doesn't oppress black people. It oppresses all of us because all the people are created equal. Have a nice day.